Oh man, this is going to be a crazy freaking manga review on a chapter of a really freaking epic hype series. I know that is going to be stunning. I already see the potential in this series and how epic it's going to be. And you're probably thinking like, what the hell are you talking about, Chibi? All you need is kill. If anyone knows about this series, it has the illustrator that basically drew the art to Bakuman and Death Note and uh, some scenes of Black Cat doing the artwork to All You Need Is Kill. Now, if that is not enough to get you entertained, let's talk about something else. There's going to be a live-action movie coming in America on June 6, 2014, and uh, wow, what I've seen in the plot is so original, and it's different, and holy crap, it dragged me in. This manga, this anime, the live-action movie is going to be unreal, and I can see the hop already probably going to start to form very soon. And this... This manga, this first chapter was an incredibly long manga chapter. I think it had like 50 or 60 pages. It was so much entertainment value out of this. It was so dark. And it was right up my alley of how a manga series should be. And I cannot wait to get to see how All You Need Is Kill is going to be. This is probably going to be, no joke in my opinion, after reading this manga chapter, if the anime does well, that's going to be airing this year... This is probably going to be the anime of the year if they do it right. But the reason why, the reason why I want to state this is because of the artwork, just the artwork in itself of the first chapter, right? That's the only chapter that's out, was dark, gritty, and it was creepy. Our main character, Keiji, is just literally stuck in this world, and every time he dies, it gets reset to a day before he goes to a war to fight these creatures called Mimics, that are like these sci-fi alien creatures that are taken over the world. So far, the plot probably doesn't seem original, okay? But let me tell you what is so original about this plot. So every time the main character dies, he gets reset back in time. Now, no matter how he dies, he gets reset back in time. For instance, he tests this. First time he dies, he like he remembers like he's been here before, but he goes on with the story and he gets killed at the war scene with this girl called Rita. And so, pretty much when he gets killed, he resets back into laying in his bed, looking at a book that he hasn't read yet, but he knows he's read. And pretty much he talks to his friend saying, oh, let's go get some booze and all that and sign this paper. And then he repeats it and he decides like, what the hell's going on? And he runs off, leaves the base, tries to abandon the base that and not go into the war the next day and guess what happens he gets killed again by mimics that are not supposed to be there and he sees this old man and i'm guessing that this old man's granddaughter sitting right there on the side of a beach and they're talking oh i like the ocean colored water and all of a sudden spoiler spoiler if you haven't if you haven't read this manga do not continue this spoiler they, there's a freaking mimic that pops out of the freaking just out of nowhere and cleaves off the old man's head. I mean, that was so horrific. The gore, holy crap, the gore was insane. And then you see a little girl that probably looks like she's only 12. You see her just get decapped. I was like, what the hell, like, little girl? She got decapped. I was like, what? This freaking manga is going... Oh, man, I see so much potential in this manga. I haven't been this excited for an actual manga like this in a long time. And I see so much potential in this as a series. I, I cannot wait to get to see this in anime form. And I wonder if they're going to censor it or not. Hopefully they don't censor it because this anime is going to be great. They even had color pages in the first chapter of showing like well, how the world is colored and all that. Which is beautiful, beautiful artwork. The artwork of the series definitely shines with the quality of the characters. The characters are really likable. And we got a very decent plot already starting to build. And I wonder how our main character is going to get out of this world to be able to move on and not die repeatedly. He writes on his hand right at the end of this chapter of five saying I'm guessing what world he's in, how many times he's died and that is crazy. So imagine if you had to live day after day dying over and over and get reset. I mean at first you'd probably get numb to it but you would want to get out of that world instead of seeing the same crap over and over. And so how the hell did he get in this? How the hell did he get into a situation like this? What the hell is going on? This this, holy crap, man, the plot is so engaging. It just drags you, and I mean, it literally grabs you by the feet and says, you're coming here, you're mine, boy. That's exactly what it did to me. And I, I knew, I saw a lot of hype with this series. I saw a lot of people talking about it. And the real reason why I decided to actually read this manga, I'm going to tell you real quick. It's because of this, right here, or backwards, right here, uh, Bakuman. Now, Bakuman is a beautiful story. And the actual artist to the series is the same artist to, as I was saying, All You Need Is Kill. I loved his artwork. So I looked it up, and I was like, holy crap, All You Need Is Kill is made by the same guy? And then I would freaking read it, and I was like, this plot is epic. 
I, pretty much, I don't want to spoil no much of the series. I probably pretty much spoiled this entire chapter for you if you haven't actually read the manga. But I see so much. Go read this manga right freaking now. I mean, if you're still watching this review and you haven't read it, go watch it. It is, yeah. Okay, I want to end it right here because I want to be just. I want to be assessing my thoughts for multiple hours now after what I just read. Everybody, have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please stay safe. Chibi out.